Oh, welcome everybody to episode four of the Hoop Tales podcast, a podcast created by Basketball Ballarat where we'll chat to past and present players, coaches and members to discuss their time with us here at the club, uh, their lives in general. And my name is Ryan McHugh and I'm extremely, extremely happy to say for episode four, we have former fan favourite, Joy Burke jumping on. Joy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Ryan. It's such an honour to be on your podcast and just to say say hi to everyone in Ballarat that I consider family and, and I love so much. I'm constantly thinking about all of you. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Joy. So obviously, Joy, you know, you were part of uh, the Selkirk Rush NBL1 kind of inaugural season. What was, uh, what was that like going from the Siebel competition into the NBL1? I was really impressed, actually. I thought that the NBL1 did a great job of especially taking the promotional aspect of the league to a whole nother level with yep. their highlights and social media engagement. And I think as a club, we did an incredible job of just engaging with the fans and being present. And Andrew Day, he, you as well, Ryan, are so much to, to thank for that because all of your hard work really paid off. And and look at the way the whole community would come and support our games. And it just meant, it meant the world to me as a player to just see all the familiar faces from the kids at school to the ones, you know, in city council yeah. to the retired community, everything in between. It was just such a family atmosphere. And that is my number one favorite thing about Ballarat. It was just the fact that the whole town comes around basketball and is so supportive and loving and you know as a foreign player that that's priceless and, and it's very special mm. well I know I'm speaking for everybody here in Ballarat where we say we miss you a lot and you definitely you definitely <laughs> became uh, became one of us here in Ballarat you know you were everyone knew who you were and we were also lucky to uh, lucky to have you here and you know it's something that we're all we're all very grateful for so, uh, so tell me, Joy, what's life sort of been like for you during this whole COVID pandemic? Obviously, you've been back in the States now. What's, uh, what's life like for you? So I'm currently in Dallas, Texas, and everything on the news is pretty crazy. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting because it feels fairly normal stepping outside. You know, there's the whole face mask thing that we're all aware of now. And um, other than that, I'm very thankful because my family and we've just been really protected and safe and healthy. And so um, just constant prayers in, in that area. And then um, I would say my story is a little bit interesting because I left Ballarat back almost a year ago now. And I, I left thinking, you know, I need to take a year off of basketball. My body was already struggling at that point <laughs> and I thought a year to just get healthier and really also invest in new career skills and what does life after basketball look like what do I have to offer kind of explore that whole area and and so I really gave myself a year season not to be not to say oh I'm retiring or oh I'm gonna do this or that but just to rest and so that was my plan and then little did I know 2020 happened and everyone's <laughs> on that plan now <laughs> forced plan right right because I mine was voluntary and so what I'm thankful for is I actually got certified as a sports life coach and I joined this incredible team and I'm now heading up the sports philanthropy side of things and it's as you know that's a huge passion of mine and the reason why I decided to go into that direction was being in Ballarat and Peter Eddy and the whole club, they were so great about giving me opportunities to, to be in schools. And, and I mean, even at Phoenix and Mount Clear College, I was in the well-being department and these, the administrators and, and teachers, they would just trust me with these teenagers. And, and I wanted to be trained to actually give them something besides oh, I'm a role model or I play basketball, you know, that kind of stuff. And so this is really anchored in well-being and it's all about growing three-dimensionally, personally for significance, professionally for success and philanthropically for service and, and kind of developing that holistic person. So 
it is something I'm so passionate about. And also on the side of for, sports philanthropy, just how can athletes and teams use their platforms that they've been given to take giving back to another level? Because, you know, because Ryan, you played basketball too. And it's, it's like, who gave you hope? you know, for your whole career or where's that emotional connection and how can you, how can you give back in that area? Because it means something to you. And, and that's what I want to help people discover. I really, I think in this time, well-being is very important and the more we can all learn and be trained in it, the better, <laughs> right? Because our world is changing. <laughs> yeah, Joy, that, that sounds amazing. And I, and I wish I could say, I'm, I'm surprised that you've you know, found yourself in this type of field, but I'm just not. You were always made for this, and it was always uh, it was always bigger than basketball for you. It was you know, basketball is something that you did and you loved, uh, but you did use that platform to connect with youth in Ballarat and regional Victoria, and you just you know you use that platform for so many good things, and it was it was amazing to watch what you were able to achieve uh, here in Ballarat and like I said, regional Victoria throughout your time with us. It was uh, it was incredible to watch. Thank you, Ryan. That means a lot to me. We have a lot of funny experiences from some of those moments together. <laughs> wow, well, well, yeah, we are. Yeah, because obviously what was, I think it was back in 2017, I think that's when you and I kind of were co-running the whole community mm -hmm. and events department of the club and, you know, it was all new and you and I were just trying to come up with new ideas to engage people and things like that. And yeah, we definitely found ourselves in some some pretty funny situations trying to uh, trying to get that department up and running, but it was it was fun, and I had, a, I had an absolute blast working with you. Yeah, same to you as well. I mean, it's it's your heart and soul as well, Ryan. That's why it was it was really special. Definitely, definitely. So, what we will do, Joy, is obviously we will chat a little bit about the basketball, and I guess just for for people who knew you just as a rush player, if you can maybe give us a little bit more of an insight as to really how your basketball journey started from, you know, however old you were when you first picked up a basketball to, to college, to playing professionally. And if you can just give us a bit of a, a bit of an overview of your actual basketball career thus far. How much time do we have? <laughs> trying, <laughs> we'll, trying see to think. we'll see how we go. We might only get through half. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'll still be in juniors by the time I'm done here. It's been, <laughs> It's been a wild career beyond what I ever expected. You know, a lot of people, they they grow up with this passion for basketball. And I feel like I was kind of thrown into it because of my height. And looking back and, and even looking forward, it's crazy to think that I've gotten to experience what I have through basketball. And it's really shaped who I am. So how I got started was I our family, we moved from Taiwan to America when I was 12 years old. Yep. And it was right in January, which was basketball season for school. And the first day my principal hands me a jersey and he says, you're on the team. Your first game is after school. <laughs> and I'm just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, I don't play basketball, but that was the start of my journey. And it was those people in my life early on, coaches and mentors and um, even former older players as well, they they just saw potential in me and they called that forth. And, and so I think it's really, really such a unique gift to be able to have and to give people when you, as a coach, Ryan, you, you see, you know, a youth player and you're able to see what they can become and what that does to that person. It's just, it's so special. So I, I had those people in my life who, invested in me and gave me opportunity and and put in the time with me to help me go from zero to let's get some foundations in and and so before I knew it I was getting recruited by colleges and that was kind of my ambition at the time as a as a high school player was okay I have this opportunity to get you know uni paid for and play basketball at, at the highest level so that was my motivator. I never thought I was going to keep playing beyond college. Wow. Um, yeah, I was, I thought I was one and done, you know? 
<laughs> yeah, because I, I just, I loved the game, but I never, and I could never picture myself as a pro. Strangely enough, other people said I was going to do that, but I was, I was a bit rebellious with it. And I think it goes hand in hand with my passion for just cultures and traveling and living abroad and really immersing myself in, in a community like Ballarat and, and that place becoming home. And that's what propelled me on this basketball journey was the opportunity to, to have that unique experience because when we travel and take holidays, it's, it's kind of just a glimpse of, of what that culture is like, but actually investing in a place and staying for a while, you get to almost become a local <laughs> in a lot of ways. So, so that's, that's kind of my story. I started after college, I, I would played at Arizona state university and ended up playing my first season in Denmark that year changed wow. my life completely, completely changed my life in those nine months. So I have very, very special moments from Denmark that I can share in a different time because <laughs> that will take an hour. Uh, but that, that really led me to Australia. And Ryan, I don't know if you know this, but I, it was, we were going into the finals and it was, it was May of 2015. And I just, I had this desire in my heart for Australia at that time, which came out of nowhere. I'd never really even thought about Australia, but I just had this desire to play basketball in Australia, but I didn't have an agent. I didn't know who to contact, but it was, it was during the finals and I just, I knew I was going to play there. And there was one person that I knew, his name is Simon Pritchard, who ended up coaching WNBL for yep. the Bendigo Spirit. And he's the one within, so my team won the championship, which was a huge highlight. I went back to America within a week. Simon, he texts me and says he just got the head coaching job with Bendigo Spirit. And he's like, I'm looking for an import. I want you to come. And that was how my whole journey to Australia started. And as, as you know, um, my assistant coach at the time with the Bendigo Spirit was Dave, Dave Flint, oh, Flinty, the <laughs> legend. And I think it was the first or second week I was at Bendigo, which my first weekend, we came to Ballarat and I had, I had a scrimmage game yep. in the Minor Dome. Yep. So that was just so special because that was where I, I played my first game, even though I wasn't yeah. a part of the club, you know. It's and crazy. I didn't know so, that. that is, that's yeah, crazy. it's so many, in hindsight, looking back, it's like, how did this happen, yeah. right? Um, but I, I ended up, Flinty asked me to play, you know, Siebel at the time for Ballarat. And I, I thought, oh, I don't know, because at that point I was in a really low point with basketball. And I didn't know if I wanted to keep playing. I was kind of, I knew I loved Australia, but I was, I was like, am I, you know, I did the Australia thing. Is it time to move on? And he gave me that opportunity and Splash, Molly, Abby, all these amazing players, Christy, even um, Karen, mm. she, she was, you know, it was just this incredible roster. And, and so they, they, um, yeah. They, I decided I would sign and give it a try, and Ballarat's just totally become my home in in these four years. It's such a fun story to look back on. It is. Did you ever think you'd stay with us for as long as you did? I think, you know, after my first season, um, the club was really trying to get me to to commit to more years, yeah. and I was really hesitant at first, but. I so enjoyed my my whole experience, mm -hmm. and it's crazy because everyone talks about the winters and you know, but for me it was it was just the community, it was the club, it was the people, just won me over, and so I've just been saying yes, I'll come back every year, and this is going to be the first year I missed, and the season and the league canceled, so <laughs> here we go crazy right yeah. who could have written this story no that's yeah 
That's crazy. That is crazy. Is that tell me what was it? What was it like having played for for two legends of of the club? Obviously, both in Flinty and in Hazy. You know, you you played under both of them. What what was that like? They are so amazing. I mean, they both are very different mm. in coaching styles, but as far as just people, incredible people, such givers, always encouraging and wanting the best for their players and just what they invest I mean that that spoke volumes to me Flinty was doing you know he was driving all around Victoria at that yeah. time just to come to trainings and just to to be engaged with the team and he would I mean I was just blown away by his commitment and his his um passion for our team and to see us become successful and and with Hazy, I mean, he's just – what he sacrificed from time away from work and family to, to really be so invested with us us girls, it just brought that that fire to our team because especially in Ballarat, he's so – he's such a legend. And he's been on the – you know, the year prior, he was the minors head coach, and yeah. now we have him. And it's just you don't see that in women's sports, right? So I – I recognize that as a very unique opportunity and, and those two and, and even the rest of the coaching staff, like Meeks, they're all, they're all lifelong friends. You know, it, it's so beyond just the game of basketball. Mm, very true. Very true. Well, what we're going to do now, Joy, is we're going to jump onto a segment uh, we called Get to Know Me. Uh, and a special shout out to McCafe Ballarat, the official coffee for us here at Basketball Ballarat. So what I'm going to do, Joy, is we've got about eight questions and it's just a chance for the listeners to get to know you a little bit better. All right, let's go. Favourite holiday destination? It's tough. Gotta Hawaii. Hawaii? I'm just going to say the first thing that comes to mind, Hawaii. <laughs> uh, do you have any game day routines or superstitions that you do? I always have avocado toast in the morning. <laughs> I and that. I have a coffee. I have a coffee an hour ahead of tip-off. An hour before? Mm-hmm. Right. What about yeah, so my not second favourite sport? My second favourite sport? Yep. Beach volleyball. I think you'd be good at that. Yeah, I'd so love to play. <laughs> I think more for the scenery, you know. I just love yeah, the absolutely. ocean. <laughs> uh, favourite WNBL team? Bendigo Spirit. Yeah. Could have guessed that one. What about our uh, favorite NBL team? Ooh, that's tough because I have friends on teams now. I'll have to go with United. Yep. Uh, biggest setback you've faced? <laughs> Where is, I have a whole list of those. Um, in my basketball career or in life? Um... We'll go basketball. Injuries. Injuries. You got a specific one? Um, <laughs> probably my knee. Yep. And just being told by doctors, you know, to just do some swimming and light walking and yep. biking. And yeah. Mm. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, name an achievement of yours. Hmm. You know, I felt really honored to win the Bernie Stone Female Athlete of the Year last year. It was the first time that award was presented, and it's a huge honor. And I don't know if Bernie will ever watch this, but he's incredible. I'm thankful for all that he's done for our club and, and for me. So it was a huge honor to win that award. Most prized possession. Oh, that's a hard one for you. You're very sentimental. Yeah, I am very sentimental. <laughs> hmm. Prized possession. Mm. Because I've been on this journey where I've been traveling so much and living out of a suitcase, really. And so I kind of, in the back of my head, when I go shopping, I remind myself I'm collecting moments, not things. <laughs> so... Wow. So my, my most prized possession would probably be family, friends, and pets. <laughs> take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. That was awesome, Joy. That was really good. All right. So now um, 
obviously let's talk maybe a little bit about about life for you away from basketball. So obviously we chatted a bit at the start about what you've sort of been doing since you know COVID's hit and things like that. So maybe we can tell the listeners a little bit about what you studied at um, at Arizona State and you know I guess go a little bit more in depth on your plans um, away from the court. So I studied. I got my undergrad bachelor's degree in business marketing with an international business focus. And I got my master's in communication with a focus in advocacy. And so what I want to do in the future besides basketball is I would love to be in a place where I can actually give and help people and make that my career. So sports philanthropy is a big passion of mine, as I spoke about earlier. But ultimately, I want to, it sounds really, really cheesy, but my dream is to help other people's dreams come true. And I want everyone to be able to live a life full of, of, of peace and joy and purpose and, and really helping people discover what that looks like for them. Special joy that is. (laughs) <laughs> Stop, Ryan. <laughs> no, I was being serious. I was being serious. So nice. Um, so, so tell tell us. Do you think you're um? Do you think you're gonna play again? Yeah. Yeah. I never think I'm. I never think I'm done, Ryan. <laughs> yep. So this year, so obviously, if COVID, if COVID wasn't a thing, your plan this year was to just rest, recover, take care of your body and your mind, and then and then play again. Like that was your that was your goal. Yeah, look, I don't have a ton of future plans. <laughs> My life is pretty go with the flow. And, and as opportunities come, I, I kind of assess and decide, you know, what feels right right now. So I can't save 100% for sure. Um, but I, you know, all of us are kind of weighing what does the future even look like at this point? Will sports exist, right? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I it will. It will exist. I'm I'm you know, I'm very yeah, serious about that. But for me, if I had the opportunity to come back and play, I would really consider that. I'm not even kidding. I I would I would probably. So we'll see how the body holds up and how these immigration laws work and that's it, yeah. Travel bans and league decisions they're yeah. all kind of above us right now it's, it. it's all going to change all right now this mm-hmm. one's going to be hard for you joy but we're going to move on to your best baller moment and this is uh thanks to peter stevens mg proud vehicle sponsor of here of us here at basketball ballarat obviously joy you are you drove around in an mg you liked them didn't you i love the mg yes good. very good right so you've got to give us your your favorite basketball moment in ballarat or in general We'll go Ballarat. Hmm. <laughs> no, it's hard. You know, I'm, I'm, the, well, I'm the worst. Really no, it's, it's true because I'm, it doesn't even matter if it's my whole career with basketball or a specific team or season. I am the, one of those people. I just don't remember stats. I don't remember games. Yeah. But I, I think with Ballarat, there's just been – I don't even know what specific game. But there's maybe it's when we play Bendigo or, you know, with the crosstown rivalry. Yeah. But there's just these these moments in games where the team just really comes together and and is in sync and just is battling for each other and we're so connected and 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 then we just dig deep on a whole nother level. And and those were probably my highlights is just experiencing that with people. And it's just always special because especially with our, our season and our teams, we've in a lot of ways been an underdog and and a lot of times overlooked. And so when we've surprised people and really, (laughs) especially on our home court, that's always special. It's huge. So I can't think of a specific moment. That one will have to, I need time to think about that. (laughs) We'll take it. That was good. That was good. Well, Joy, that's a, that's pretty much it for, for us today. We, we thank you so much for jumping on the pod. It was great to have you and to, to talk to you and get to, to get to learn a little bit about your life at the moment. And yeah, we just thank you so much for jumping on. Thank you, Ryan. And I just want to say on behalf of myself, 
<laughs> I, I just, I just am thinking about all of you in Ballarat and, and saying prayers and sending my love and look forward to the day we can all see each other again. That's it. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Joy. And uh, everybody, the podcast can be found on Spotify or on our YouTube channel. We thank you everyone for tuning in today and take care.